the just worst athletic department right now in the nation is whom? Because they've got some issues. And it has nothing to do with the fact that they still have the Heisman Trophy up for a man who committed a double murder. So, why is Southern California? I, I, I can't. I don't know why I laugh every time that like we talk about the. Well, it's kids. just it, it's just very it's still very bizarre that he got away with it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Why is Southern California the biggest train wreck since Alabama of the nineties? So I want to be clear up front. We're going to go into this issue with Southern California. If I were to name the top five biggest scandals in college athletics the last 25 years, none of these issues at USC would crack that top five. The thing with USC, it's it's the volume of issues that they've had. Wait a second. So the paying players like Reggie Bush wouldn't be in the top 10? Not when you got the Larry, Na Larry Nasser scandal at Michigan State and the Jerry Sandusky scandal at Penn State. Yeah, that's kind of a whole different level. But as far as that's what I mean, college, scandals in college athletics, I mean, there's some really serious ones. Alabama scandal this past year in basketball, I think, surpasses anything of USC. OK, but those are felonious breaking the law sort of things. To, to, if you just did breaking NCAA rules, they're number one with a bullet. Yes, they are, because they have. <laughs> well, and, and look, there's some, there are personal scandals failings with USC, too, that we're going to get to. It's just. Again, those personal failings aren't as bad as the personal moral failings at other schools. So just for everybody to go back through history, this started in the heat of their dynasty. They call it a dynasty. They won one outright national championship in 2004, but they called it a dynasty. And then there was the whole Reggie Bush thing. So Reggie Bush happens. Lane Kiffin gets hired from Tennessee to USC. As he's hired from Tennessee to USC, it comes to light that USC committed all these violations. They were going on probation. And Lane Kiffin himself committed a ton of violations at Tennessee and had to sit in on NCAA violation hearings at Tennessee while head coach at USC. The athletic director of USC at the time, Mike Garrett, lashed out at the NCAA, said everybody's jealous that they're not Trojans. He's removed. I'm sure you remember all of that, Dave, because you were in the thick of it covering Tennessee at the time. Y yes. No, I, I remember all of that. I, I remember writing the story how Lane Kiffin would be at best the 12th selection by Southern California. And that story ran the day that he left. So it didn't even run. Well, yeah, he didn't even they were wanted Jack Del Rio. They wanted a ton of different people. And I think they all said no because they were afraid of the sanctions. It didn't even run on the front page, Caleb. And Tennessee football always ran on the front page of the sports section, ran on the inside that there's no way he would leave. So I do want to clarify one thing really quick, and it was on our message board. Uh, Tom pointed that out. You know, we're, when we talk about the Sandusky stuff, that's crimes against humanity. I mean, that's disgusting. That's on a whole different level. But if you want to talk about Southern Cal and and the paying of players, and there's hundreds of thousands of dollars going to Reggie Bush and possibly OJ Mayo for housing. That's a top 10 one to me in my lifetime because that was so widespread. Taking out the really disgusting crimes against humanity. I don't, there's a reason that I chose sports instead of news. I don't even want to get into all that stuff at Michigan State and at Penn State. Um, but I think that's right up at the top. And I want to compare it as a backdrop to Alabama in the 90s because Alabama, let's remember. They went Before you go there, Dave, I do think we should bring up why we're bringing this up now, the news story behind it. Okay, cool. All right, go there, but uh, I, I do want to compare to Alabama after winning the national championship in 92. So go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, go so ahead. the reason we're bringing this up, guys, is Athletic Director Mike Bone resigned last Friday. Uh, LA Times reports there was a very uncomfortable culture uh, that was there. And part of that was personal conduct failings. The Times also reported that people raised concerns about Bone while he was at Cincinnati, where he was athletic director from 2014 to 2019. Sounds like he was reportedly making unwanted physical contact with women on several occasions, including touching their shoulders or backs in a way that made them visibly uncomfortable. And there was some criticism of mismanagement. This is right as they're about to join the Big Ten. So we're saying all this now because this is a, by any account, this is a scandal ridden resignation. Yes. No doubt. So here's what Alabama went through after winning a national championship in 1992 with Gene Stallings. They went through a scandal in which they reportedly paid Albert Means 
was it three hundred thousand dollars or two eighty? It was right in there, and I can tell you that Tennessee definitely believed they did it because I've read the letter that Philip Fulmer sent to uh, then Commissioner Roy Kramer, um, and then Alabama also had a situation in which they ran through coaches. Um, they hired one goofball after another. One of them was Mike Price, who was involved in a situation in which he was with a lady of the night. And this was at a booster golf tournament. Talk about the gall. And then he goes out to play golf after a Friday night of her yelling roll tide. And he's while he's playing golf, she calls room service and I'll take one of everything on the menu. So they contacted Mike Price and said, this seems like a weird order. Uh, Are you okay in this? So, and and then there were there were issues that just seemed like Alabama at Alabama every year, and that's hard to for some of you that are younger than than me. That's hard to imagine how good they have been. Mike Shula was a train wreck of a. Don't hire. forget Antonio Langham, the ineligible player before Albert Means. Yeah, right Antonio after Langham, and then the the decent coach they had. Um, you might have to help me on this. Um, reportedly had a, a, a relationship with his secretary. So um, help me Franchoni? with his name. What's that? Dennis Franchoni? No, Dennis Franchoni is good, but Dennis Franchoni was another semi-scandal because he left in the middle of the night and surprised Alabama to go to a TCU, I believe. Oh, so, I think – yeah, according to Roll Bama Roll, it was Mike DeBose who had the affair with who reported Mike DeBose uh, reportedly had an affair with the secretary, right? I mean, this is it was as bad as you could get. Is Southern Cal what they're going through now worse, the same, better is not the right word, comparable? To me, they're incredibly comparable. Yeah, so let's let's just go in order on everything that's happened since the national title in 2005 and then the law to Texas in 2006. The Reggie Bush investigation opens. The OJ Mayo investigation opens. Pete Carroll bails on USC before the sanctions come down because they got busted for Reggie Bush. Tim Floyd gets fired and the basketball program and the football program both get with hit, hit, hit with sanctions. Mike Garrett is gone. Then Lane Kiffin comes in, has a sanction side of Tennessee. I brought that up. Lane Kiffin's fired by Pat Hayden, who brings in, wait for it, Steve Sarkeesian. And we know what happened with Steve Sarkeesian, who had a massive alcohol problem. By the yeah, way, and here's, here's why, to me, that alcohol problem is bigger than just Steve Sarkeesian, is because... Listen, I know people that have had problems with alcohol and other drugs. I feel for them in a lot of situations, and I hope they get help, and it is a real issue. I don't doubt that at all. I'm not going to get in the debate of whether or not it's a disease. You can have that. You can believe what you want. That's fine. But the fact that it got to the point where he showed up at a booster function and was intoxicated speaking to everyone and they didn't nip it in the bud right there. And then he showed up at a Sunday morning football meeting intoxicated. That's a sign that it's systemic. You've let it go way too far. So that's not one man's problem. That's an athletic department, not stepping up and say, this isn't acceptable. Let's either get you help or let's fire you. Yeah. And Hayden admitted that USC never did a public record search of Sarkeesian which apparently it was very much out there that he had had a number of alcohol-related incidents, I think dating back to Washington. And and let's not forget they hired him, um, Hayden, they, they hired him from television. And at one point he ran on the sideline to debate some call that the referees made. He's an athletic director. What are you doing down there? Yeah, it was one of those situations where – I will never forget, and I, I, I remember watching when Steve Sarkeesian was fired, and we all understood why Steve Sarkeesian had to go, but I think the, the scandal was they didn't fire Pat Hayden with him. Like, that would have been like if Tennessee stuck with Philip Fulmer after firing Jeremy Pruitt. Like, I, I, I couldn't figure out for the life of me how Pat Hayden was able to stay on. For, he only lasted another year, but still lasting another year and being able to determine USC's next football coach, which he did, and Clay Helton, I mean, that was just, what? And cause, because – there, it was so obvious that I, I don't want to say USC covered for his alcoholism, 
for his alcohol problem, but they certainly didn't help it. They certainly enabled it. And they cert- and forget the moral wrongness of covering for someone who has an alcohol problem. You That's a detriment to your program on its, on its own. If you let a coach, I mean, I, Dave, you have told me some stories about coaches at different places that they help, they, they somewhat derailed their programs and what they, in their own careers. Well, I mean, it's also a danger to the man too, Steve Sarkeesian. I mean, he, I mean, it just, there's a lot of ways that that could go south and they let that happen. So final verdict, as far as Alabama after Stallings, and they did have the Antonio Langham issue. So but Alabama, Alabama in the nineties. So you're including the Stallings years. I say general. Alabama immediately after they won the national title, like the next year was the Langham scandal. Okay. So which is worse, this or what Southern Cal is going through? I think. See, they both had a head coach fired for personal failings. I think the Alabama one's worse because, okay, Steve Sarkeesian had a problem, but the Mike Price one, that if you compare the personal moral failings, the Mike Price one is still, like, number one. <laughs> uh, I, I'm i going to go with Southern Cal, and you know why? It's two words, Lane Kiffin. You knew that you were... And maybe he was the sacrificial lamb and he didn't even know it. Travis says Alabama. You could probably sway me to be real honest, Travis. But when you hire Lane Kiffin, who there were questions about from the NCAA and you've already got the NCAA sniffing around, then it created a situation in which you got hammered with 35 scholarship reductions a year. And it just is that to me was the dumbest decision and it affected Tennessee fans through and through, affected the landscape of the SEC. But it was the dumbest decision to hire him. No offense to Lane Kiffin, but just the look of it, the eye test, it was like you were completely tone deaf to the fact that you were already in the midst of one of the biggest pay for play scandals in the history of college athletics you were doling out hundreds of thousands of dollars and you go out and you hire lane kiffin who i at the time i was in the middle of investigating the hostess gate thing <laughs> yes that's true that's a good point well remember they note they notably thumb their nose at the public mike garrett was quoted as saying everybody in these institutions is just jealous that they're not trojans as they were trying to appeal their sanctions, and you're right, they hired Lane Kiffin before the sanctions came down. And you know this better than I do, Dave, because you were covering him. But as far as I'm aware, in 2009, Lane Kiffin did not have many friends in the college football institutions, did he? In elite college football circles. No, he's always been, well, not, not so much now. People respect his game. But he was viewed as a guy who was standing on third base and thought he had a triple. Yeah. He, because of his dad. You know, his dad was going to be able to uh, open doors for him. And he was he had an NFL arrogant shot. too. Yeah. Yeah, it came across as arrogant. I think he was really insecure in front of people is the reason. But he, he, you know, he was already an NFL coach by the time he was what? 31. 35? Oh, no, 31. He was 33 when he was hired at Tennessee. So he was 31 when he got hired by the Raiders. Yeah. All I know is I don't know who his agent is. Was Jimmy Sexton his agent? Oh yeah. <laughs> the answer to the answer to is Jimmy Sexton his agent when you're talking about college football coaches is yes. He's good. How do, so he has to he has to sell coaches against other coaches sometimes. I feel like doesn't he? <laughs> yes, but guess who ends up getting paid regardless? Jimmy Sexton. <laughs> hey now. All right. <laughs> It works out well for him. So the biggest scandal is Alabama, the nineties or Southern Cal. Now you're going Alabama, the nineties. I'm going Southern Cal. Now. Okay. One more though. Wait, one more. And I got a question. I got a question. One more. Okay. What about Florida in the eighties? Oh, now we're throwing everybody under the bus. Okay. Florida in the eighties. You'll have to refresh me a little bit. Do, do we have paying players? Do we have ladies of the night? by the way ladies of the night yes so florida next, next person that ask next three people that ask can get a uh a hooker shirt how about that speaking of ladies were, of the night. so 
both – so Florida had two SEC championships vacated, ironically, to Tennessee because of because of pay-for-play scandals. One happened Spurrier's first year in 1990. Galen Hall had a scandal that had happened four years before, and so the NCAA basically told Florida in 1990 no postseason. Florida finishes 7-1 and one in the SEC, Tennessee 6-1-1. One and one. But Tennessee gets the SEC title because Florida's on probation. Spurrier still rants to that about that to this day. He says the 1990 team was his favorite team. 1985, the beloved Sugar Vols. Tennessee and Florida had the same record that year in the SEC. Tennessee lost to Florida, but Tennessee got the SEC title, and it was Galen Hall's second year because they were under investigation, Florida, for the head coach right before Galen Hall, which I'm looking up now was Charlie Pell. Oh, yeah, Charlie Pell. Yes. And so Charlie Pell and Galen Hall both had left the program in some trouble. So they had to vacate multiple SEC championships and multiple postseasons. And it wasn't until Spurrier got there where Spurrier, as you and I know, didn't have to cheat because he could just out scheme anybody and then just get guys he wanted in the state of Florida. Okay. All right. So we've got, we got Southern Cal, got Alabama. You think Alabama number one, right? Yes, definitely. Okay. Just for my price. I'm sorry. I had, I had Southern Cal above Alabama, but I'll go ahead and tell you right now. I'll blow both of them out of the water. You ready? Okay. It's Ole Miss. It's Ole Miss under Hugh Freeze, right? Not just under Hugh Freeze. Dating back to Ole Miss was about Ole Miss. One of the reasons they lost Peyton Manning to Tennessee was they were about to go on probation in the 90s. And they had four level one violations. Tennessee's kind of concerned about one level one violation. They had four and the four worst level thing, ones. And, and also this, this not how much of a snake they were. They tried to, they have these massive violations and then they tried to pin them on Houston nut. Remember? Yes, I do remember that. And, and the other thing to remember about the old Miss scandal is that you did have, Ladies of the night involved. Well, that's here's the funny thing because, and we we see this in politics. Whenever a sex scandal happens, people get enthralled by the sex scandal and forget the deeper scandals that happened with it. And so, on honestly, it oftentimes helps the person involved in the sex scandal. So Hugh Freeze, everybody just looks at him now like, oh, he made a mistake sleeping around with prostitutes. He's reformed. <laughs> but no, the mistake, the, the the scandal was that like. There was massive other level one violations of pain. That that prostitute scandal came to light because of what he was doing to illegally to lure players to Ole Miss. And then he tried to throw Houston Nut under the bus for it. It's kind of like Bill Clinton in the 90s. I'm not trying to get political, but everybody thought about it was the Monica scandal. It was a sex scandal. The scandal was kind of that he perjured himself and that he was under investigation for another sexual misconduct allegation from Paula Jones. But all anybody ever saw was, oh, he had an affair with an intern in the White House. And right, so, so more people talked about Hugh Freeze's escort scandal than the fact that Ole Miss was clearly paying players. Is that what you're telling me? Yeah, they, they were clearly paying players, and they tried to defame Houston Nutt. Like, just straight up libelously defame him. And and also that he they had lied to players. Here's the biggest scandal. Forget paying players, which because NIL, we can talk about the moral failings of paying players. Ole Miss had – the reason they defamed Houston Nutt so much was they wanted the current players that were committed to the class before the transfer portal to be stuck with the program once the sanctions came to light. Rebecca's laughing at the ladies of the night thing. I, I appreciate that, Rebecca, because it's nice to know that I'm not going too blue for – for the ladies out there. Um, but do you remember it was so bad at Ole Miss that a guy runs up to Lane Kiffin when he's getting off the plane? He goes, don't forget to get a burner phone. <laughs> do you remember I that? I don't remember that at all. Yes. But it is hilarious that Lane Kiffin is the guy they would hire, like, after all of this. What was the class that Hugh Freeze? Uh, uh, what was the incredible class he had? What year was that? And I'll tell you. And we all we didn't we all knew they were cheating with that class. Okay, here's uh, I, that's when I was covering recruiting for ESPN. So I want to 
I want I want to tell you the moment that I knew that they were cheating because I'm always the guy who kind of gives you the benefit of the doubt a little bit because I ended up being friends with Trooper Taylor and Trooper Taylor was a great recruiter and the immediate thing you say in recruiting is oh he's cheating and I don't think Trooper Taylor was ever cheating I don't think Tennessee was cheating at that time when they were doing well well here's the moment that I knew that. Ole Miss was cheating. Okay. You get Robert Kimdiche, number one player in the nation by everybody. The one, the once every decade type of guy. And you get him. His brother played for Ole Miss. So it's the old, yeah, we'll get your brother a year before as long as you make sure and end up at Ole Miss. Okay. You can roll with that. Laquan Treadwell. He was the receiver. You probably don't remember. Another five-star guy. Oh, I remember Laquan Treadwell. Okay. He had family in the Oxford area. Okay. Got that one. Tony Connor, another five-star. He was a safety. I covered him very closely because he was in my area of Mississippi. Used to be Antonio Connor. Somewhere along the lines, it turned to Tony Connor. All right. He's an in-state kid. That makes sense, right? So if I'm making the argument that they're not cheating, I'm doing a pretty good job right now, right? Right. Okay. Larry Tunzel, they're cheating. <laughs> I mean, for him to go to Ole Miss and not <laughs> Alabama had zero ties, made zero sense. Larry so Tunzel, true. And then he ends up with the whole gas, gas mask gas. bong thing. <laughs> and, and, and so also – I, I believe Laramie Tunsil was born in Louisiana, grew up in Florida. Alabama is a premier program. Where does Ole Miss fit into that? They, they don't. <laughs> it was absolutely the most obvious of all time. Laramie Tunsil was the offensive lineman. I tried to post a picture of him. Just Google Laramie Tunsil bong, and that's the guy. So, yeah, he was in the middle of the NFL draft hitting a bong and his stock dropped like a rock. And then the best part, if you remember, that this beats Southern Cal and Alabama all the heck. So he goes to the post-draft press conference and they said, so it was reported on social media that the Ole Miss coaches gave you money. Did they give you money? He goes, oh, yeah, they gave me money. <laughs> Just like, <laughs> oh, yeah, you take a left to go to the stadium up there. It was, oh, yeah, they gave me money. <laughs> they did. And then one of his agent people came and pulled him off the press conference. This is all happening during the draft. Yeah, that was that was just an incredible night of where social media just overlaps with traditional broadcast media. 